Hello, I am Nathan, and this is Read Only Memories. I had a real strong urge to play this today, um, so I am. Uh, it's very rare that I have a Saturday off, and I thought that there's criminally a criminal lack of coverage of this game on Game Escape, so I will. I wanted to do a video now. It's oh. It's almost May, and this seems like a, a terrible time to announce that uh, Read Only Memories was Gamescape's Game of the Year 2015. I did start putting a section on the site, and then I realised I'd forgotten how to code. Because, I don't know, full-time work, I'm not doing that. It's, I've lost it a bit. So, yeah, I want to talk about a bit about why this was... Game Escapes Game of the Year, my Game of the Year. Also, I'm quite hungover, so oh, I'm gonna I'll try. <laughs> I was out till the early hours of the morning. 2064 AD. The world is on the cusp of not one, but three technological singularities. I'll let this intro play out. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work. So it's a we don't remember it's a point and click adventure game. It's very story driven. And it's just set in a in a vibrant world with diverse interesting characters and locations. Plus there's a character called Starfucker. I mean, you know how can you not love a game with a character called Starfucker in it? However, it's a soundtrack as well, I still listen to. To this day, despite I completed this game I think in November last year. Okay, so this is setting up the, like the, human the atmosphere, the Seems world. The relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology and kind of introducing a lot of characters that you meet along the way. Which is something I don't think I realised the first time I played through this. I kind of saw this and then completely forgot about all of the characters it shows. But it went completely over my head that I met them in the actual game. Kind of life into the world. And with this... Humanity's destiny will be altered forever. And it's, it's Turing. Turing's the best. Right. And that is very cool. So I kind of... I completed this. It took about nine hours. I did it in the space of two days because I was just completely engrossed. Which doesn't ha happen very often these days. And then I don't think I've actually played it since. It was one of those, I kind of played it, was absolutely amazed by it. I finished it, I was feeling really good about it, and then never touched it again. Right, home sweet home. Well, maybe not so sweet. Musty might be a better descriptor. Okay, so I'm using a controller. Well, I'm using the Steam controller, but you can use any controller. And using... Well, a D-pad or a touchpad in this case, you can kind of cycle through everything you can you can interact with. So let's look at the sink. You don't know exactly what that uses. Any of that seems to be growing. Okay. Let's turn on sink. <laughs> I wonder. If I... Right, I'm going to use the Xbox controller because the Steam has clicky bits. Which probably... My mic is probably picking up. Let's see, we've got a plant. I think I uh, I did a bad job with my plant in my playthrough. It died. So life is strange all over again. Um, more more fragile than a snowflake. Okay, so you got. No, let's talk to the plant. This poor thing might be too far gone already. Okay, can we talk to the sink? Or use an item. I don't have. Oh, I have an ID card. Let's talk. Oh, hang on. 
Try talking to the sink, but it gives you the cold shoulder. How rude. A stack of papers. Right, unpublished novel. Your friend Hayden gave this to you. The group is old, but the music is timeless. That's what he said, at least. It's a load pepping face there. Let's have a look out the window. 24 7 view if you're a fan of up close missionary. Is that book propping up the window? Yep. <laughs> Let's talk to a coffee. Yeah, but can't argue with that. Take a sip of the old stale coffee. Oh, why did I do that? There's F and K seem clear as day. It's also really gross. Right. Good old Lappy. So somewhere, we've got some GX Ultra Beats headphones. The ultimate in budget audio. Right. So we need to write a review, so we better try it. Guess now is as good a time as any to get to work. They're smart headphones, so you should be able to use them with some things lying around your apartment. So, these headphones, you can just listen to objects. It's not a good vibe. Let's listen to the sink, that's, that's gonna go well. You can hear the sink gurgling in high def. So, let's listen to the poster. Right, the coffee. Okay. Then we've got sounds of San Francisco. Oh no. <laughs> See, you can use these throughout the game, you keep hold of them. And you can just use them on things, and I just I completely forgot to. It wasn't until I saw a video or watched a video of someone playing it, but I went, oh yeah, of course I can do that. Right. <clears throat> Lappy's a bit of a relic. So let's. Okay. Let's have a look. We've got OK Today for News, Journal Logic, Lips Live, and Inbox. Let's check our emails. Hell, so terrifying. So this is. Oh, I can't talk today. That's what happens when I do a, a video or something. Uh, it's so personal that no other living thing should dare enter. Luckily, you're the only person with a password. Oh, is it not going to let... Oh. Alright, let's have a look. Spam. Get cheap cash. Only 99 credits for 30 day supply. 212 stims. Okay. Hello there, I'm Prince Thomas. Yes, THE Prince Thomas. Heir to the digital empire of horse and books. 92413. Okay. Still get spam in the future. An invite to come and see the lighting ceremony of the Christmas tree downtown from your friends at Dr. Uh, Tricia Le DDS. Why does a dentist want you to see a lighting ceremony? Feels like a trap. Let's have a look at work. The editor for OMG Zounds. We're a new up and coming audio review feed looking for hot talent. We'd love to feature any product reviews you'd like to do for us. We'd be able to give you some great exposure. And if we like your stuff, could possibly throw some credit. At least they're offering some money. They're not just saying, right for us, it'll it's great exposure. Get your name out there. Doesn't anyone pay their journalists anymore? Right. Oh, that's not what I meant to do at all. I just meant to back up. I should talk to the laptop. Anyway, let's let's get this going, so we can meet some characters. I imagine. All right, time to get your work out of the way. Let's do this. Selling your soul, bit by bit, character by character. Finished. Now to send it off to the editor. There, your big break. 
Surely a glowing review of GX Ultra beats your ticket out of poverty and into a book deal. Surely. Work is finally out of the way, time for bed, but first log out. Or you could read some okay today and catch up on some real news before you sleep. Okay, let's have a look at okay today. Home to home Neo San Francisco 49ers. Oh. <laughs> Quest for 10 is back on December 19. Sunday's big game at the new candlestick brings an important question to everyone's mind. Can the 49ers punch their ticket to the playoffs and bring the Lombardi Trophy back to Neo San Francisco? It would mark the first win since the move to new candlestick after almost a 50 year hiatus from the city. Since returning, they've had disappointing losses to the Mexico City Luchadors and the New York Giants. They brought on a fresh coach, but controversy surround their new quarterback, Patricia Lopez, as some vocal sports fans continue to accuse her of having cybernetic implants in her throwing arm that illegally enhances her abilities. Certain modifications and implants are banned by the league, but their official reports state their reported investiga or repeated investigations into Lopez found no evidence to sustain these rumours. It's relevant to point out that Lopez is the first woman to ever be quarterback in a major football team. The 49ers look to reclaim their top spot since their last win with the Super Bowl. Oh, I don't know what number that is. <laughs> well, t t some. Uh, t uh, ooh. Is it 79? I bet it's not. I can't remember. L is 50? Oh, I don't know. That's embarrassing. Sunday's game is a rubber match, and the winner secures a spot in their playoffs, beaten at, uh, between our Neo San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. It'll be a close game to say the least. Catch Sunday's results here first. Right, I'm gonna go to bed. It's better only chats back when you sleep talking. It's not the most well designed function. Okay. Okay. So this is a bit of an intruder here. This is kind of watching us sleep. Oh. Oh, good. You're finally awake. I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. Are you that significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? Um, I'm gonna go with, huh? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. Whilst you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganised your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be sub suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my micro actuators, so I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. Oh, my coffee's gone. Sink's still there, the, the sludge in the sink. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've run into a bit of a snag. Um, let's, let's, let's go with it. Snag? Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have broken down in some way whilst I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I will consider it no great loss though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Really? You, you break into my house and then you insult, so, insult old Lappy? Really? Don't fret. I didn't manage to back up your data's drives contents before the crash. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. Right, let's let's go into the the real question here. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of sub, subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all of the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Hayden gave us a poster. Hayden Weber. Well, saying I know Hayden is. Putting it simply, but yes. 
I don't really know. That's that's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but certainly the most statistically supported. I have done the math. Math. Maths. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some unknown persons. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape, lest I be captured by the intruders too. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, came here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. Um, let's welcome to me. I ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on my assumptions of visibility, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to be both able and willing to help me, and the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. I found when I was playing this before, I tried, I answered, well, when I was talking to Turing at least, or this mysterious robot. <laughs> um, I was just, I was so nice. I was just nice the whole way through. I, I, I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't say any kind of horrible thing or sarcastic thing um, at all. I, c I, couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Don't worry, you're strong-willed and capable. I chose to put my trust in you. If anything, it's worth trying for Hayden. Hayden is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but I can't imagine that would be enough to get him kidnapped. Especially since no one has ever tried offering him more money yet. I suspect it has some has to, has to do with me. Who right, yeah, who are you? Ah, excuse me. I forget to introduce myself. I have never had the pleasure of doing so before. I'm Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could... Con oh, there's a space missing between could and describe. Me is one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scale or tempt an organisation into kidnapping him. I watched them um, Avengers Ultra Age of Ultron yesterday, which has similar themes, although nowhere near as good as this. Either to stop him, his research or to take it and use it for themselves. Oh, this music. I, I absolutely adore the music in this so much. I think, um, is it too mellow who does it? Uh, let's go. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even seeming human when you talk to them. This is just because they're cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I was taught to interact with the world around me. But, despite my ability to self-modify my code, I'm not certain that I'm sapient. I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial intel life stemmed from his need to find this out. Ah, oh, I'm making up words now, in here. Uh, but I can't say I have any new insight into the question. It How can any of you tell that you aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will? Yeah, we, you just woken me up. Uh, it's too philosophical. Philosophical. Oh, philosophical. For this time in the morning. I'm not even certain who would benefit from the most from taking prison a Hayden prisoner. <laughs> it's not as though he had been looking over his shoulder. However, there are several multinational, oh, multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. He has never indicated to me any possible danger from an outside personal group. We're out of time. Oh. Hang on. 
I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare. From here to Hayes' apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be enthusiastic. Let's go. Let's go and see some, some of the town. Well, in a minute, anyway. <laughs> That's strange. Well, the lock for our home seems to have already been replaced. I'm certain my audio sensors picked up the sounds of his assailants breaking the lock. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on Turing's side. You'll believe them. It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. Oh! A lucky break! It seems my access codes still work. Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. I think there's some there's some funny lines when when Turing breaks into your apartment about the fact that they didn't just sneak in through the window and they came through the door. I meant to go through that, but never mind. Agreed. All right. As you enter. <clears throat> You take a glance around the studio apartment. Not much has changed since your last visit a few years ago. I'm not surprised. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off serious attackers. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. Hmm. Of course not. Asimov's law. To make a machine intelligent, truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. <laughs> I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. A social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Yep, glad we're clear on that one. Self-defence, and defence of one's home and family, is typically allowed though. I could have, and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defence. But... I... Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. Okay. So I've got a cursor which I can move with the analog stick so you can play it in a more traditional point and click. But I really like the fact you can just scroll through everything. Not because I'm lazy, but because it's it makes it very difficult to miss things. Pictures of Hayden travelling all over the world, working at a company like Parallax ensures you'll be more than well off. Can I listen to it? Nope. Do I not have my headphones here? Oh, I do. It's bad manners to listen on other people's plants. <laughs> Hayden has much better plants than me. for the best. Let's see. Hayden likes the natural light of this apartment that affords. This window here is where I escaped from. It is a considerable distance to the ground below. Critical system damage would be unlikely, but I would certainly have damaged my legs beyond repair. So... I took the fire escape. Yep. Oh, I, lo I love it. I love their grin. What else have we got here? Broken tech. A ROM component in Hayden's headset. He must have been in the middle of working on something. See that? That looks like it's the only thing that's disturbed in this apartment. A few vintage video game consoles. Hayden was always a fan of old tech. There was a Mega 16, a Dual, and even a Family Link. Co <laughs> you're not actually. You're not actually. Oh. I'm not actually thinking about switching one of those games on right now, are you? Mm. Would have been cool. Te tech banter. Ugh. I I have real issues with the word banter of what it's become in recent years. There are no buttons on the screen. There's no need to watch TV right now. That's Hayden's computer. Most people just use a hand screen or goggles in conjunction with their ROM, but desktop rigs like this are still more suitable to the intensive programming tasks Hayden needs to perform. Unfortunately, no, I don't. 
And before you ask, I don't think I would be able to break past its security in any reasonable length of time. Your door used a much simpler set of algorithms for a much weaker processor. I actually have a bit less free processing power than the regular ROM, despite my fantastically more capable CPU. Much of those extra clock cycles are used to maintain my complex personality algorithms. Haven's computer has enough spare processing power to run the counter-intrusion software if I attempt to slice, slice in. Frankly, even if I did have the power capability, I haven't found hacking to be one of my talents. The whole reason humans have always been better at breaking into systems than the systems are keeping them out is because humans have intuition. While computers can only think in straight lines, humans can think sideways and upside down. I lack that type of human creativity. Well, I wouldn't say that, but as silly as it sounds, I just don't think I'm very good with computers. I do seem to have some skill with painting though painting? Hayden was impressed with some of my pieces, but I'm not sure he has a firm enough grasp on early 20th century abstract expressionism to give me an objective opinion. That's true. Machines are best at reproduction, still life, impressionism, photorealism, but I find it more challenging and satisfying to paint what I feel. <laughs> I think I see something under those reference books. Okay. Is it a password? Oh, hang on. I just moved the books out of the way. I haven't picked it up yet. Ah, uh, where is it? Hang on. Nope. Oh. Hang on. This is going well. Ah, Hayden's tablet. I find it rather annoying that he prefers to go a basic route. Basic rather than trust me with his schedule. It is well within my skill set, but he claims he does not want me to begin to feel subservient to him. Eh. It looks like there's a place here for a physical memory card. Let's take that then. No? Oh. oh, okay. Right. I can't remember where the card is. This is gonna... Hmm. Is it in the plant? Plant whisperer, you are not. I swear it was down here. Isn't th oh, that's it. Yeah, it was down there. Memory card. Right. See, we're, we're, we're not bad at this. We can do some investigating. Hayden must have taken out the memory card in order to prevent his assailants from easily tracing his connections. If only he had kept, me, kept his information stored with me, he would not have had to resort to such crude measures. Tomcat. Oh, we're going to meet Tomcat. Yeah, I'm planning to play up to kind of finishing a scene in the bar. Because that's you've got a good cast of characters in the bar and you, you'll get an idea of kind of the people that live in, in Neo San Francisco and kind of where this game's heading. We can head over there and ask around about this Tomcat character. My city map? Oh, excuse me. I still haven't set, you, set up a user account for you in my system. We shouldn't put that off any longer. Once finished, I'll have an assortment of new ways to assist you. For example, I'll be able to reroute any call or message that you receive while we're out and about. There are many other systems and applications that you will be able to utilize in addition to these. This is an exciting thing, I promise. I just need you to I need, need to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Let's just get this crap over with. That's it's a bit aggressive. Um I wanna watch that. Sigh. This is just how things are done. I'm certain I could spend a few quadrillion clock cycles to bypass that part of my operating system, but that seems less efficient than just running the setup program. So, here we go. 
Welcome to the first time user setup for your new relationship and organizational manager and the latest build of the Parallax Live Intelligent Processing System. I'll need to ask you a few questions and then you can get right to managing your life with your new ROM. If you have any questions, feel free to consult our online FAQ and setup guide or contact our support department directly. First, could you tell me your preferred name for use in account creation, online communications and conversational speech? I, I wonder what happens if you select that. Right. Uh, oh, that went wrong. <laughs> Failing Mr. B to enter my name here, it's going well. I want to capitalize. Oh. Thank you. I have imp I have input your name as Nate. Next, could you tell me which pronouns I should use for you in referential and conversational speech? So you've got a range that you can choose whichever you feel comfortable with and then you can also do custom pronouns as well. Uh, well, I'll stick with that. Thank you. I have input your pronouns as he, him, his, his. Finally, can you tell me your preferred diet for use in restaurant recommendations? Uh... <laughs> well, vegan. I, if I'm basing this on myself, I have to go there. I'm largely vegan. I'm a lactose intolerant vegetarian, but... But read only memories, you didn't include that. <laughs> Diet set is vegan, are you sure? That's correct. Thank you for confirming, Nate. I have obtained your physical locations from GPS and will load local data into my memory as it becomes available. I think I'm slipping from the voice. Not that I'm, I'm a terrible voice actor, I can't. Please review your submitted profile information for accuracy or we start set up to enter it again. In review, your name is Nate, your pronouns are he, him, and your diet is vegan. Does that sound right? Yep. I'm happy with that. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Jewing. See, Nate, that was relatively painless. You should now be able to access the local map of Neo San Francisco. The meeting with Tomcat isn't until later this evening. Perhaps we should head back to your apartment for now. I'm sure we can find some common ground in getting to one to know one each other better. We should have no problem passing the time efficiently. Thank you for escorting me here. You're welcome, Drew. Look at that face, you just can't... Can't say no to that face. Let's head back to your home. Okay. You know, your question that uh, Avata isn't doing very well, Nate. Have you been overwatering it? No, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If I can continue without the sarcasm, it's actually a, a succulent. And since I'm assuming you leave this window open all the time, it should get more than enough water just from the occasional rain blowing in. Speaking of the rain, your decorative plant may be doing poorly, but the mildew in your drywall is flourishing. <laughs> How thoughtful of them. Oh, naive touring. The Glacier Lavata also knows the jade plant, money tree, lucky tree or friendship tree. Is an excellent, easy to care for houseplant. They make beautiful bonsai, are suitable for beginners, and have some cultural significance both in the Far East and America as a token of good financial luck. Most likely an urban legend, but still a nice gift. I'd like your authorization to have a few tools shipped here. If I replant it into a more suitable pot with sandier soil, it should be thriving again soon. You just have to remember to water it less frequently. Considering the state of your apartment, I would have figured you'd neglect it rather than drown it. Aww. <laughs> Ironic, since it would be doing better if you had. Excellent. 
I think that's one of the achievements I missed when I played this. Some, it's something to do with the pole. The supplies should have been here soon. I ordered them from a place close by to keep the shipping costs down. Oh, one other thing, Nate. When I was doing this research on how to best take care of the question of Vata, I stumbled upon the persistent belief that talking to plants improves their health. There is scientific evidence that shows there may be something to the notion, but the methodology in the studies was a bit shaky, so it could all be ranked superstition. Okay, Nate. Still, I'll keep an eye on it. Oh. Oh. It's almost time that Hayden has scheduled to meet the Tomcat. We should make our way to the st to Stardust soon. Your city map is updated with the location. Cool. Let's, uh... Let's talk to the sink again. Did they just try and talk back? Probably not a good idea to touch that slime. That's a mystery for another reporter. Okay. It's Turing, your borrowed companion. Rom slash investigation buddy. <laughs> and there's my screenshot for the video. Alright. Let's go to the map. So I got a range. Can I no. Let's go to Stardust. Well this looks like the place, assuming the flashing neon signs are telling the truth. From the sounds of the music, things are already underway at Stardust. Hopefully you can find Tomcat inside and some answers. Uh, let's have a look at the car. 2060-25 Coupe. Perfect for letting everybody know you spent a fortune of credits on a car. Okay, I, I want to talk to the car. <laughs> you tell the car to stay parked. It doesn't recognise your voice, so it just sits there. Can I listen to the car? In <laughs> oh, this is the whole of the future where it's just going to be put like new ways of getting adverts to you. Can I. Holiday jingles start playing as you approach. These headphones sound amazing and also nightmarish at the same time. It's the holidays. Yes, this game's set around Christmas, as you probably recognised. Let's just hold up there. You got ID? The bouncer for Stardust seems almost pensive as he watches the street, pausing every now and then to take a drag from his vaporizer. Alright, looks good to me. Cool, thank you. Welcome to Stardust. <laughs> I just remembered all the drinks in this game. Uh, this is the place. Have you ever been here before, Nate? Yeah, I, I love this music, so absolutely. The atmosphere is certainly exciting. I'm particularly impressed by some of the more subtle effects the music and lights are having on your autonomic nervous system. Try not to let yourself get too entranced, at least not until we've achieved our goal. Anyway, where do you think we should start? Let's get a drink. Let's check the bar. Maybe the bartender can tell us where to find Tomcat. I can't remember their name, he, this, guy, this guy's awesome. A gruff looking man holds down the bar. He seems friendly enough given his size. <laughs> right. Hey friends, what can I do for you? Sure, but first, let's get you a drink. What, what'll it be? Buzzer? Wiener juice? Canopy? Clumsy uh, Belarusian? Core appeal? Core appeal. F <laughs> fucking I don't know. Radmaster? Blue Fairy? Groggy Nog? Uh, Michelada? Green tea? Sour Apple Teeny? Kier Royal? There's so many drinks. There's so many drinks. Kier I'm going through them all. Kier Royal, uh, Denzvenska, uh, Bjornstammen, Butch Flower, Sazerac, Seven Minutes, Persian June, Spicy Gentleman, Rusty Nail, Bionic Femme, Beer, just beer, like on the seventh page, just beer, Onyx Rum, 
Doggies and creme, or cream. Tastes like orange. Ingredients and ratios. TMF. Drinking game. <laughs> How many are there? I don't think I've actually ever gone through all of the drinks list before. Maple this off. Sober shelfer. Bears Winter Teeny. Sickly Sky. Garibaldi. Whiskey Rita. Wolf Bite Shot. Air Drink. Mo Sugar Rush. PT. Fluffy Dreams. Subtle Bitch. Scotch Drop and Roll. <laughs> Power Play. Whiskey. Neverworld. Tokyo Tea. Rusted Lace. Modest Connie. Blue Boy. Natasha Al. Allegri, Sunshine Cloud, Hassy Spike, Hassy, uh, <laughs> Antarctic Harvest, Gut Punch, Buzzer, Wiener, oh we're back, we're back to the Wiener Juice, right, I don't know, oh, I don't mean to do that, but never mind, so many drinks these days, remind me what's in that, Drinkionary, the free and open alcoholopedia, says one and a half ounces of gin, Three ounces of energy drink, three ounces of cowboy cola. Well, I don't drink energy drinks or coke, so... No, that sounds horrendous. Uh, let's go for... Seven minutes. Let's have a look. One part whipped cream, vodka, and one part seven down. I don't drink vodka either, but you know, fuck it. <laughs> right, you got, you got it. Coming right up. Cool. Uh, right. Hayden, older guy, does some com kind of computer work at Parallax. I think I know who you're talking about. Don't know a thing about him being missing though. He comes in here every couple of weeks, hangs out at the bar, and chats with people. Typical stuff. Doesn't really seem like his scene, but I think he comes in to scout young programming talent. I can ask around, find it out if anyone has seen him lately. I'll let you know. I'm pretty sure I saw Tomcat come in earlier, but I don't know where they went off to. I'd ask what you were meeting about, but I know they like to keep that kind of stuff quiet. Maybe try looking out on the dance floor? If they come around over here, I'll tell them someone's looking. I I would normally just choose all every text option, but I'd never never ask their name. Oh, let's listen to some posters. New single by Zazen. Starts to play loudly. Oh, I thought the music might change. Right, got some people dancing. So, you, <laughs> one thing about this, you know, a character is important if their portrait shows up when you when you hover over them. Rad dancer, let's look at the rad dancer. They're really into dancing right now. Hey, what's up? Having a good time? Everything's sinking. They look really hyped. Oh yeah. Alright, let's dance in. Yay! It's let's dance in city over here. A woman stands at the drink table, quietly people watching. I <laughs> You got a death wish, Nate? Yes? What do you want? What the hell? So you head right up to the chick with the ears because of course you'd have to have the cat name? I get it. I'm freaking believable. I'll, I'll be apologetic. Yeah, you assumed. Of course you assumed. I didn't, I was just saying hello but didn't give me an option. What's all genetically... Uh, gen oh, genotypical people ever do. Genotypical? Oh, wrong voice, never mind. As in, not a hybrid like me, you know, that little defining fact that led you to that ignorant shit in the first place. What's next? You're gonna ask me if I'm in heat? Get lost. <laughs> yeah, alright, whatever. Just get moving. 
She's a great character. I want to say her name's Nina, but I think I might be completely wrong. Hey there. I heard you were looking for me. What can I do for you? Oh, accent. I'm not going to do an accent. The one and only. Although I prefer it if you kept it a little quieter than you have been. I do my share of moseying on both sides of the law, if you know what I mean. Nah, oh it's Jess. I was completely wrong. Is there somebody called Nina in this game? Or am I just, just making shit up? Nah, Jess is just a bit of a prickly pear. She'd probably give hell just to about anyone who wanted up and started bothering her with something. Don't matter what. To what do I owe the pleasure of our meeting here? Hayden is missing? Well, that's sour news indeed. I see you got his little wrong with you, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. You know about me? And my creation? Hayden never mentioned your involvement to me. Sure thing, hun. I helped reprogram the back end on your OS, so the AI code Hayden wrote for you would interface properly with the network. God, I lost the voice there a bit, didn't I? I have a distressing lack of information on my own creation. Hayden never saw fit to inform me on what went into designing my programming. Is there anything else you can tell me? Not much more on that end. I didn't, I didn't have much to do with your core AI routine, so I can't really elaborate. I can only do the voice when the text helps. <laughs> Sorry, dear. Anything I can help with? <laughs> ah, don't you worry about Jess, none. She just don't have a lot of patience when talking to a genotypical folk like us. She's had to deal with a lot of awful pricks. Because, well... Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to judge her. Good call. As it suits you, hun. Hayden and I met not long after my blackout ran out, when he hired me for my expertise in cracking the lips OS. It puzzled me at that time, since he's very sharp himself. He could have handled it himself. I think he just wanted someone working on it off the books. He ain't the most straightforward man. I'm not real sure. He was super harsh harsh about his work on touring, and that might have made Parallax upset. They're working on their own projects, and I'm certain Hayden had some kind of an intellectual property clause written into his contract with them. That would just mean he would get fired. Maybe even sued, but I can't imagine they would disappear him. They ain't the CIA or anything. Mostly that little guy you got there. I'm sure he had his fingers in a lot of pies, but Turing is all that I knew about. The live intelligence processing system is the primary operating system an old Parallax computer is used to run on. But the company has since expanded it to make it especially useful for their ROMs. It's real heavy on learning algorithms, so it can tailor itself to each user's habits and functions for using a distributed mesh network for non-essential public files. <laughs> Yikes. Y'all sure don't pull punches, huh? Nate, don't be so... Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to be. Besides, I could understand them just fine. Why couldn't you? Nah, nah. Let me try to condense it. I'm basically saying all ROMs connect to all other ROMs within range, and they share any files amongst themselves that the user hasn't flanked as private. It's handy in dense population areas like Neo San Francisco, since it can bypass regular telecom nodes to access the internet. Out in the sticks though, you're stuck connecting to regular old pipes. Yuck. I'm not really sure, hon, but I guess it might help if we knew why he went missing in the first place. I'll stay here and ask around a bit. People know me and they sure ain't gonna talk to a newbie like yourself. Why don't you hop back over to Hayden's place and grab the data cache out of his computer for me? I'll either be here or across the street gathering some ramen. We can go over his research notes and see if we can't find a reason for his being vanished. Good luck, Tur Turing. You keep him out of trouble. Alright. 
Is that a jukebox? No, it's a megaphobita. I don't. Arcade cabinet. Megaphobita. Only the most go shooting this, go ghoul blasting this. Fun you have this side of the bay. Oh, we can actually play. <laughs> Alright. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I... Am I supposed to shoot all the things? Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Oh, c c I was trying to go to the other side. Oh, this is pretty cool. Oh my god. Okay. I feel we're doing okay here. Hooray, you survived and got a score of 22,600. Fantastic effort. I thought you were gone near the end. Look at Arcade Punk. This punk doesn't look too into what they're playing. Hands off the joystick, buzzer. Hey! Have you checked out Megaphobita? Heard the machine was donated to Stardust recently, but it's been having problems since it got here. Hey, something doesn't seem right once you get to the boss, you know? Okay. So I'm going to stop there. So, I would implore you. This game is absolutely wonderful. It just it has got real feel good. In fact, I was thinking about it for days after I finished it. Still listening to the soundtrack. There's some real interesting character development, especially with Turing throughout throughout the entire game. Um, and it's just it's just wonderful. I can't stress enough how much I completely adore this game. It was head and shoulders above everything last year for me. For like Ori in the Bone Forest kind of. It was kind of second to that. But yeah, six ninety nine on Steam. Um, I bought it when it was ten ninety nine. That's the price drop. You know, it's worth ten ninety nine. It's worth more. So uh, there is a new version of this coming out in I think October, uh, which has voice acting and new things which I don't really know about. So I think I'm gonna. No, I've started this again. I think I'm just gonna play it because I I just kind of want to really. But yeah, read any memories, check it out. Game Escapes, Game of the Year 2015. It's wonderful.